I personally, but I, I'm about the money. People that know me on camera that say, it, yeah, I do, that's him. I'm very much about business. Now, within that, I wrestle with every day. I hear Fob saying he got rich and everything like that. I hear us talk about God. I hear us talk about the Bible. And then I wonder what message are we ultimately putting out there. Now, one of the things I think about in the Bible that I wrestle with is the scripture says that for a rich man to make it into heaven is like a camel making it through the eye of a needle. Right. That's one that I would like to hear how y'all feel about that. Mm -hmm. The scriptures also have a story. Christ was on his journey one day, and he ran into a guy, and the guy told him, I want to be down with you. I want to rock and roll with you. You know what I'm saying? And, right. and you know, I'm putting this in my own words, but those know this is exact yeah. scripture. Yeah. So he said, all right, follow the commandments. You know, he said, oh, well, I follow all the commandments. I do all of that. He said, oh, all right. So you follow the commandments, then give up all your money and give up everything that you have to the poor, and then come on, come rock with me. And when he said that, him and the disciples kept going, and the dude was standing there stuck. So he told the disciples when he walked off, the problem and the issue was with the guy was that he was rich and that he couldn't figure out that part that he said and that's something that was uh, that, that that's something that i personally all right shalom this is her one by yasha allah of the lions den camp I want to say ka halayim la yahawa ba hashim yahawa shai ba hashim haraka kodash mama double honor to the elder apostles of gms and the elders and shalom to you akim nagwati my children that believe in sincerity and truth around the four corners of the earth uh this is gonna be a quick edification on um the topic dealing with the camel going through or the, yeah, the camel going through the eye of a needle all right and you have a lot of Christian churches, they don't know how to break it down. A lot of cats that claim they're Israelites, they don't know how to break it down. But, um, you know, like IUIC, uh, I'm sure. Uh, but anyway, so I'm going to get into this parable because of the clip that you saw in the beginning that I'm going to put in the beginning of this video. Dealing with some, uh, I think it'll show a, a, a rapper, battle rapper named Mav Hoppa, Hoffa. He um, started on a little show, but on this show he had a, um, a few guests on there, but they be talking a lot of um, what they call conspiracy theories or conspiracies, and they they touch on the scriptures, but they kind of speak on it in a way where it's like they believe. Matter of fact, here you go. Let's get this. Uh, let me get this one here. All right, this is um, Romans 10 and 2. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of the Most High Yahweh, but not according to knowledge. You see, that's why people love the Lord. But, I mean, some of our people love and they try to chase after the truth. But they haven't found it, you know. And we're in the last days, man. And there are a lot of people seeing the prophecies, they're seeing the signs come to pass, but they don't know what's going on. And a lot of riches are out here right now. They have hyperinflation, you know. Um, Esau done printed so much money on the printing press. There's so many dollars floating around um, that everybody's getting rich. And now you got this new blockchain and digital currencies to where it's just easy to become a millionaire in a couple of days, you know? So people are getting rich and now they're wrestling. They're like, damn, should I throw this away or uh, chase the Lord? Like you got a lot of rappers, a lot of entertainers, a lot of female strippers that became entertainers, rappers. And now they're getting baptized, and, you know? So they, they're seeking the Lord, but they're doing it the wrong way, all right?
There's only one way into the truth. Ain't no wrong with being rich. You can have money, but in this society, if you're rich, man, something ain't right. You can have, you can be well off. You can be a thousandaire or maybe even a millionaire. That's low level. But will they be willing to come out and teach? Will they be willing to cast off the burdens of this, uh, the labors of being rich? You know, trying to keep it. All right. Let me get this. Let's get some scriptures to, to edify on it. Romans 11 and 7. What then? Israel, our people, the Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, have not obtained that which they're seeking for, but the election have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. All right. So they, their eyes are blinded, and the elect that was sealed 2,000 years ago, they're in this time today with their eyes open, ready to receive their reward. So if they're not of the elect, they're going to be groping in the dark all the way into their destruction. All right. So let me get this. All right. This is Isaiah 24 and 11. There is a crying for wine in the streets, man. See, they need answers. People looking for answers. You know, they, and they, they, a lot of them heard that we're Israelites. Like, uh, you know, so in this video that I played in the, in the clip in the beginning, that brother had a question. And he was like, yo, I got all this money. I'm a businessman. I'm chasing money and all this. But I wrestle with this. He said he's wrestling with it. You see that? He said he's wrestling with, with it. The fact that he's rich and chasing money, right, laboring after the money. There's nothing wrong with that. You're going to go out to your, your daily bread. But also, um, the path of this truth can lead you to riches as well. You know, you ain't got to be broke being in this truth. You're going to have a job. You're going to have something, you know. But um, a lot of people think the men of the Lord are teaching out on the streets and out on the corners. They call us bums. See that? Because the Lord tells us to wear sackcloth and garments. But imagine somebody like Floyd Mayweather that got billions of dollars keeping his money but coming out to teach and telling the world that America's going to be destroyed and that uh, just like Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, and he'll lose a bunch of sales there in that alphabet community. And he tell Esau to go in slavery and what he's going to do to him in the kingdom. That'll make him lose sales there. In certain cities, it'd be boycotted. You know, they tell Jake they gotta repent and stop eating pork and all that. Man, listen, they they boycott the hell out of these these entertainers, man. They lose their money. Look at Brandon Brandon T. Jackson. He was straddling the fence, man. But all they gotta do is offer him a deal, and we gonna see a price here, a whole new Brandon T. Jackson out there, a dude from uh, Tropic Thunder. Booty juice. <laughs> So um, that's right, man. So let's get into some. Um, let's get into the scripture that he wanted to bring out, and he wanted to answer for. It. And he brought out the scripture. And, um, this is a few scriptures. I think Matthew, Mark, and and Luke. And I'm gonna kind of fluctuate between those three to give a clear understanding on what was meant. Cause he had a question about this Matthew's 19 and um, I think it was 24. Let's see. All right, let's start from um. Let's start from uh, Matthew nineteen and uh, seventeen. Uh, fifteen. All right. Um, and he and he laid his hands on them, and departed thence. Talking about Yahushua. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, all right, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? You know, and that's what this man was asking uh, in this video, in the, in the clip. And he was speaking to this new upcoming star, um, this, this uh, entertainer from Brooklyn. And, um, he was asking me, yo, with all your success, could you walk away from the money? And that opportunity going to come to him with the MOTB. Because they're going to transition from all this money that people got, millions of dollars. Uh, you know, 
I think the guy's a millionaire, like uh, ten million dollars, something like that. And the guy was saying to him, like, "Yo, could you, could we, could them, you know, everybody in that room that was on that video, could they walk away from the money? And they're gonna get that opportunity, man. You know, Revelation 13, 16. All right, because they're gonna transition from the cash that they have on hand in the bank, and they're gonna demonetize it. You know, and they're gonna um, uh, devalue." the money that they have and they're going to take a big portion of it and they're going to say if they want that money or that credit or even more money or to keep that continuing in this system of making money they're going to transition over to the blockchain and from the blockchain they're going to transition to the, the capstone which would be the MOTB alright you see what they're forcing them to do now to travel and such so that time is coming where they're going to be presented with this choice right and that's why that man was asking that because he could tell something ain't right and time running short all right so um now this man this young man that came up to you and asked him this question he said what should i do that i may have eternal life all right and um, the thing is, this young man, he, was, he wasn't he was just any ordinary young man. He was a young ruler, a young rich ruler. Just like a lot of Jakes out here today, they're being made rulers, all right, in the entertainment industry. Just like Apostle Ryan Lab brought out a few days ago, that these are their ministers, their, their, their priests, you know, on the left-hand side. Once they, be, they get into the entertainment, their job is to throw out what? Decoys. If you're in this truth, you ain't going to be on there rapping about getting money. And, and women, you know, you're gonna talk about women just like King David did, but or Solomon. But you ain't gonna talk about bitches, money, hoes, and clothes, all the nigga knows, and you know, you ain't gonna talk about that. You ain't gonna talk. They ain't gonna be speaking that devil worship and shit and tattoos and everything that this world is, this present entertainment is um, centered on, centered around. It's nothing but vanity and wickedness, all right, and deceptions. The good life, people like P. Diddy, like, ah, I'm living a life of love. It's all about love, people. You know, it's like, ah, every time you see him, he's just living in a lap of luxury, which is nothing wrong with that, but I'm saying this is not our rest. The Lord said, Arise up, this is not our rest. And that's what they have to understand. They think this is it, This we made it. But the Lord said this was a curse that we were going to go to Esau for the one of all things. Render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, man. We look in our pocket, we look in our bank account, get that money out. Our face is not on that money. The Lord's face is not on that money. It's still Caesar. Still the Roman Empire all over again. And, and understanding that, what what manner of person should we be in all convo uh, holy conversation, meaning our actions? We should be hastening unto the day of the Lord, it, seeking a new heaven and a new earth where in dwell righteousness. You see that? See, this is not our heaven. You know, our heaven represents righteousness. And uh, they got to believe in that. Once they understand that, that the kingdom is coming and the thrones and the rulership and real riches, we will be able to enjoy it. Not, not within the rat race. It's called America and the system that Esau set up, money system. So this guy, this, young, this was a young, rich ruler, all right, because he said what? I said, um, and be, verse 16, Behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is, Yahweh. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. All right. And today, one of the main, the main commandments is what? Going out and teaching and um Believing in Yahweh, everything Yahweh commands us, and keeping the laws to the best of our ability. All right, and and to go out and teach and give the testimony of Yahweh, that's the commandment. All the way to the end. And he said unto him, which Yahweh said. He said which, Yahweh uh, said, 
Thou shalt do no murder. These are the commandments that he's telling him. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. All right. Honor thy mother, thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Okay. And that was just at that time. That was the basic commandments given unto Moses. That the Lord was simplifying, saying, yo, you keep these commandments, just love your neighbor. Loving your neighbor, you're going to what? Keep the commandments. That's love. All right? And, and do unto others that you have them do unto you. But there's other commandments that you have to keep, you know, and ordinances. Which is what? Going out and doing the Lord's work. Doing it correctly, the way we were taught. All right? Striving lawfully. That means to continue in this truth. And do it the way Yahweh did it, going out rebuking, reproving, and rebuking with all exhortation. You know, so let me get another precept to show that this young man was, was not just some ordinary man. All right, because he wasn't just some or ordinary citizen. He was like one of these entertainers today, man. He was a ruler. And that's what they are, man. They're some rulers. They got employees under them. They can change people's lives. They have a word for it today called moguls. All right. Rich young moguls, that's what a lot of jakes are. There's nothing wrong with that, but in this society, it's dangerous, man, for their salvation. It could be detrimental and cause them to be destroyed. So, this is Mark chapter 10, verse 17. And he took them, and when he was going forth into the way, there came one running and kneeling to him. All right. So this this man was kneeling to Yahweh by Shemuel Shai, which is good. You know, represented his humbleness, of submission, and asking him, "Good master, what shall I do that I may have eternal life?" All right. So he was young. Okay. Watch this. It says here. All right. For he had, uh, where was that? He just moved. Okay, so he's looking for, for eternal life, but he was young and rich and he was a ruler. And Yahweh Shai said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is Yahweh. Then thou knowest the commandments do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor thy father and mother. See, he added extra in there defraud not. No, and don't bear false witness. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these these have I observed from my youth. See, that's not going to save us, all right? But he said this, Then Yahweh beholding him, loved him, and said unto him. So he wasn't trying to rebuke him. He loved this, this brother, you know, just like the Lord loves us today. And he told him this, One thing thou lackest, man, and this one simple thing can get you destroyed. Go thy way. All right, go thy way. What's thy way? I mean, on, on your path, on your journey of life. And sell whatsoever thou hast. And that's what he told him back then. You don't have to do that now. All right, 2,000 years ago, it was set up for the men of the Lord to literally follow the Lord. Like, drop what they were doing. Drop their net. Drop their fishing. All that. The work that they were doing and follow your house shot. You know? And they would lose a lot of money. But the Lord said they were going to be taken care of in the city that they would go to. You do that now, you know. But back then, it was set up that way. All right? People would travel from city to city um, teaching this word. And you still had the circumcision, which were, you know, sort of like the home base, you know. A lot of Israelites that, were, that knew they were Israelites. So the Lord had it set up to where the men of the Lord would be taken care of. But now, he said, um, we're going to teach on a unicorn. All right? So you take your daily bread and, and, you, and you try to work. And the Lord will provide a way. All right, so let's see about this young brother and his demeanor, you know, his character. It says this is Mark 10. Um... In 22, and he's and he's and he was sad at the saying, man. So once you tell a man they got, they got to, see in these times you don't have to just you got a million dollars you ain't got to go 
throw it away. That don't make sense. But what he's saying is, it's about the burden of it, the burdens of it, the labors. You know, constantly watching the stock market instead of uh, doing this work or something like that. Um, uh, would they come out and teach? When would they be able to teach? You know, with all that money and travels. They, they got more free time than a lot of us, you know, when they millionaires. All right. And he's verse 22. And he said, and he was sad at that saying and went away grieved for he had great possessions. You see that? So he was rich. He had a lot of money. So he was young, rich. And let's see what else. This is Luke 18 and 18. And this is going to uh, clearly give it some more clarity on who the, uh, the character of this young man that was rich. Luke 18 and 18, and a certain ruler, what? So he wasn't just rich. He wasn't just young. He was a young, rich ruler, just like a lot of the entertainers today. All right. And a certain ruler asked him, saying, good master, what shall I do to inherit the earth life, eternal life? All right. That's what it's about, man. Eternal life. We can't take none of this stuff with us, but eternal life we'll be able to enjoy the true riches in righteousness see that so some people just get blessed man they get millions of dollars so what are they going to do then throw it away no man you take care of yourself and, you, and those around you and um and, the, and the, the brothers and sisters that teach the same testimony and you go out and teach and that's just it but being an entertainer, you got to promote. So it's like, they're going to they gonna serve God and mammon, you know, riches of Yahweh. You know, and that's what they're juggling between. It's the mindset, the labor of it, the burden of it. All right, the burdens of keeping those riches. There you go. <laughs> All right, so this is this will bring some clarity before I bring out the, ver the, the verse. All right, with... Um, the, the camel going through the eye of a needle but first I want to focus on the young rich man alright the young rich ruler like these entertainers today man because um, um, the devil can get riches too on the left hand side what did he offer to Yahweh shot he offered to give him all the kingdoms of the world you see that even Alexander was filthy rich and he was wicked the Antiochus Epiphanes so just because somebody rich doesn't make him good all right, it's a rock five and one. Set thy heart upon thy goods and say not, I have enough for my life. All right. You know, some people are like, oh, yeah, I'm good, man. You know what I mean? I'm good with all these riches. That's all I need. Da -da -da -da. No, we need eternal life. Eternal life, we need salvation. Follow not thine own mind and thy strength. All right, being young, uh, dumb and rich. To walk in the ways of thy heart. And that's the point. The Lord is saying, don't follow your own way. Follow his way. You can make money, but follow his way. And that's that's hard to do because it's a split path. This world, is, this present world is being destroyed. You know, this present world is temporal. Look at this. Uh... This is uh, 2 Corinthians 4 and 18. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. See, the things in the spirit realm and, and in the kingdom, the future. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. All right, so the current money system and the digital system and all this internet madness, it's all temporal, man. You know, so the question is, how can they have eternal life, and would they walk away from those millions of dollars if that opportunity was presented to them? You know, to to sell out or not, to do something wicked, to keep that money or to gain more money, would they walk away from that? And that's what they were asking. And the guy brought out the scripture where it said, uh. Um, 
it's easy to put a camel through the eye of a needle. So I'm going to hurry up and get to that. But the spirit uh, moving me right now. I'm going to read this real quick. I'm going to get to the point. I think it's in 12. All right. Um, all right. This is uh, Ecclesiastes 5 and 12. The sleep of a laboring man is sweet, whether he eat little or much, but the abundance of the rich shall not suffer him to sleep, man. You know? So they won't be able to rest at night. They got to go, go through all kinds of measures to keep them riches. You know, especially when you're born in a society where you got to build yours from the ground up. Esau gets it inherited so they can kind of relax a little bit. But Jake got to go to Esau for the one of all things. You know, but now we know to go to Yahweh by Shimei was shy. This, this is the time we're in. All right, this is the time we're in to where what? All right, these are the times we're in now to where, um, you know, a man's riches shouldn't, just like the monks. What the monks do is before they go settle in their temple, you know, Kung Fu and all that, Shaolin or whatever you call it, they, they they sell all they have they give away all that they have and they give it to the community you know and they go and stay in the monasteries or whatever you call it and they train for the rest of their life and shit you know so we got to be in that mindset the monk monk mindset to where we're in the world but not of the world we don't have to give up everything we have but there's a certain sacrifice that we're giving right now, presenting our body as a living sacrifice in our, in our testimony, and which could cause you to lose those riches any time, you know, cause you to lose the love of this world. All right, and the scriptures say that. All right, uh, let me get this real quick. All right, this is um, John 15 and 19. It says this real quick. Um, 15, 18. If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. How was shy? And if you were of the world, the world would love his own. See, they, that's why they being loved, man. Cause the, but they hate the proud. They hate the men of the Lord. We get some appreciation out there, but you know they really hate the doctrine that we teach because they want this place to keep going. All right, um, they want the dainties and the harvest that they're looking for, but the Lord said the vintage shall fail. If the world hates you, verse seven nineteen, if you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of this world, I have and I have chosen you out of this world. Therefore, the world hateth you, man. See that's going to happen, and with hate, you don't get no money. <laughs> all right so that deals with what persecution now there's another preset that comes to my mind let me get this this is uh first john 15 2 and 15 love not the world neither the things that are in the world see that you know and that's what the lord is saying man <clears throat> what he was telling to this young rich ruler this young rich like today entertainer or celebrity you know, he's saying what? Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. What they be doing with the entertainment? So as soon as you get in entertainment, yeah, they might be offering them to these Masonic parties and they might not go. But what happens when they go to these Grammys and these different award shows where they're doing some gothic, satanic devil worship? <clears throat> All right. Or they get on the song and they selling music with a devil worshiper. It's just all that stuff, man. It's a lot. It's an environment of, of, of wickedness that, where people can fall. That's what that's why the Lord said that this is this place is set in a dangerous place to fall, where there's fire on one hand and let word on the other. All right, one is set to drown you, and the other is set to to, uh, to cause pain, affliction, and adversity. For John. First John 2 and 15, love not the world, neither the things that are in this world. 
If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, see that, adultery, that's a lot of people, the rappers and entertainers be talking about adultery. If not, they say, hey, I ain't gonna, I ain't got a problem when people do what they do. Well, you're supposed to speak against it. That's the thing. We can't just say, we can't just be, nah, I ain't going to do with it. Well, if you don't speak on it, then you basically agree with it. That's what the Lord is saying. Choose ye to stay. You know, it's called being lukewarm and the, trying to ride the middle fence. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, all right, uh, tattoos, uh, money, drugs, and weapons. And the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of Yahweh abideth forever. You see that? So that's what the Lord is saying in that chapter. And he talked to this young rich brother, telling him to cast away his goods, because he knew about these times to come. He was telling that man to, to set a foundation for a future reward. So today, those same people, they're going to be in that same mindset. The spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet and the believers, really. And this time, they're going to be in that same spirit. They got riches. They ain't probably going to throw them away, but they're going to uh, start moving towards teaching, linking up with a camp. You know, you got a lot of brothers that was in the aim, a lot of brothers that was in the sports, me, myself, a lot of people that was offered contracts, and, but you start doing this work, you're going to neglect the other. You're going to wind up having a regular job, taking your daily bread, man. You know, with this internet, you can kind of throw stuff out there a little bit. You might even make an album, but what you going to talk about? <laughs> if you talk about the Lord, you can't really sell it. So it's like, it's tough, man. You can get on some shit like the Roots, you know, the legendary Roots crew up in Philly. They talk about social stuff, you know, social um, issues and stuff like that, and love, you know what I mean? That's simple stuff. I think if anybody would make some music, they could talk about that. But if you want to talk about your How About Shimmy Out With Shy, you shouldn't be selling it, you know, like a lot of these gospel singers. All right. Make not the Lord's house a house of merchandise. So the Lord told us what? Love not this world. All right, same thing he was telling to that young rich ruler. All right. Now, let's get back to this precept. Isaiah 10 and 20. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel, see, the remnant of Israel, Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and the speckled bird, scattered Israelite foreigners, such as are escaped of the house of Jacob, see, being escaped from this what? From the from the snare of the father, from the from the snares, the traps of the flesh and of the spirit from Esau. Being escaped from it, man, the lies that this place gonna go on forever, that they their new world order is gonna stand. That lies saying that the Lord is an Edomite, a Caucasian. Alright. They lie saying that we're just Africans. It says what? It's, and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote them. See, <clears throat> when we came over slavery, and more until the six, 1960s, the Lord said we we're going to go to Esau for the one of all things. And we still kind of got to uh, play their game under the, that yoke, which is went from slavery to the money system, the birth certificates and such. But now, in a, in a, in a mental yoke, a spiritual yoke, with the lies, a right, yoke was a trap that was around our neck in slavery, yoke of iron. But now, the Lord, since Abba Bivens, the Lord said, what? We will come to him and call on him to take care of us. Yeah, we're still in this crooked system, purposely made to twist them. But he said, what? Shall, that we shall no more again stay upon him that smote them. Who is that? Esau. But shall stay 
upon Yahweh, the Holy One of Israel. What in truth? So you can't just turn back to him asking for stuff. It's about turning back to the Lord in the spirit of truth. Now that's the point. Do these people deal with the truth? All right, so let's get into this precept real quick. And then um, uh, I'm going to close this out. I just want to uh, do some quick edification on this, John. Matthew 19 and 20, 19 and um, 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And that's kind of what that guy was asking in the beginning of the clip. All right. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is Yahweh. But if thou will enter into life, keep the commandments, all right? Enter into the truth, enter into life. You know, you can't just be um, a pagan talking about someone serving the Lord. You know, you got to keep the commandments as well, all right, to the best of our ability. <sighs> all right, um, and he said, what? Those that serve the Lord, prepare your soul for temptation, trials, persecution, all right? See, people don't want to go through that. Imagine Pete Diddy trying to do that. Stepping out there, going through the persecution for the Lord. It's possible. But at this moment in time, this dude was just hosting the Billboard Awards. Came out in the Michael Jackson outfit. So he's, yeah. He all the way in it. He in the Matrix. <laughs> he's ignorance is bliss. He's in bliss right now. All right, it says, He saith unto them, unto him, unto the rich young ruler, Yahweh Shai said, Thou shalt not murder. You know, the simple, simplify the uh, commandments. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And, and that also goes with men in this truth. All right. And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And neighbor means your brother, you, you know, Israelites. The young man saith unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth. What lack I yet, you know? <coughs> See, people think you can just get up in the morning, do some, do some prayers, and they read the Bible, and they like, I'm going to make my money. Or you link up with them, and they be behind the stage, and they get in a circle, and they say a long-ass prayer. Or they try to be funny in the prayer or something, and the next thing you know, they're giving praises to Jesus. So it's like it's, it's more detrimental to those people than anything because there'd be a lot of people that might not believe in that. And they they serving that celebrity or that rich ruler so much. And they respect them so much that they ain't going to deny them when they're praying and they're going to get in that circle. And they're going to do the whole hands and they're going to pray to sweet Jeebus. All right, the other white meat. And it says this, um, Yahweh Shai said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, and that's the point. We, our hope is to be what? Perfect in faith. That's the point. Get the glow. All right, the glow is the faith, man. You know, it's your kind of glory. Eh? That's what they call it in church. Go and sell that thou hast and give to the poor. All right, and today we give to the poor, meaning our nation, spiritually. You know, um, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. All right. So that was at that time. The Lord was saying, give up everything you got. And now you don't have to do that. You know, you got money. You don't have to just give it away and follow. You know, if you do, you, you still have a blessing. But um, the Lord, I don't believe he's asking that in these times. You know, but you're supposed to do the work. You know, following the Lord. Teaching about the prophecies, warning our people of the times to come, so they they won't. They, I mean, so like, so that they will be able to walk away when that time comes, and it's and it and it, it gets presented to them and their families, and their company, whether to submit to the system or to submit to Yahweh Bashem Shai. That's why the hour of temptation is coming upon the whole world. All right.
that's why it has to everybody has to be tested um get this real quick this is um revelation 3 and 10 because thou has kept the word of my patience i also will keep thee from the hour of temptation see the elect gonna be kept from that that word kept means shamar watching or protecting looking over you so you're going to be taken care of in the hour of temptation. What's the temptation? The trial period that's going to come upon each and every person. See that? They're going to, they want to, they want to, you know, the MOTB with every individual. That was going to be a world economic collapse. They're doing, trying to do away with fiat currency, the old world order. They want to bring in a new world order based upon digital currency. And, the, and, and the, the transition is where we're at in the midst of it right now in the gray area but eventually it's going to be evident and, if, and everybody got to make a choice and your faith got to be strong in that day you know and that's the thing and I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth alright so they're going to be tried to see a dead damn alloy which will melt in the fire which is a weak metals mixture of metals or is it gold and that's what the Lord looking for is gold man silver he says behold I come quickly hold that fast which thou hast that no man take thy crown alright so let's keep going Matthew 19 uh she's too very little uh, 21 Yahweh shall I say unto him if thou will be perfect go and sell that thou hast and give to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come and follow me but when the young man heard that saying he went away sorrowful for he had great wit, uh, possessions man so now did he do it did he do it or not you know he's here today on this earth you know, and um, like the like the brother, the, the, the brother that was in the um, beginning of this video on that Mav Hoffa show, uh, they're scared, man. It's some of them, and there's a cry for wine. They crying for answers and for the truth, and what to do because they see the dangers approaching, and they know that we all die. But the Lord said, "What we should not all sleep." See now that you know. They now turn into the Quran and all that. It's like the Bible was the one that's evident. The truth shall stand, you know. And um, let me just keep going, man. All right, let's get to the point. All right, so the young man was sorrowful, man. He was upset because he realized he had to give up that money. And today, you they realize they got to go out and teach, and they got to keep teaching every week, and they got to do their sit-down videos at least. One a day or three a day, however many you can do. You're going to have days where you just study and stuff like that because you got to be able to drink the water to pour the water out. Other than that, you got an empty cup. Verse 23, Then said Yahweh Shai to his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. So is it not going to happen? No, it's going to be what hard for them to do. It's going to be a hard task. A hard choice to make. All right, impracticably, impracticably, sheesh. It says what? With difficulty, man. It's going to be difficult for them to enter into uh, the kingdom, being the first fruits. Will they be in the kingdom as babies? Maybe. They might get destroyed and brought back to this earth and born as an Israelite in the kingdom. Um, but the Lord is saying to be the first fruit to enter into his rest. That's the goal, man. That's the that's the hope that we're looking for. It says what? And they're gonna enter in with more difficulty. It's gonna be difficult. Alright. Um so a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. 
And again, I say unto you, um, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of Yahweh. All right, so that's the parable. Okay, that's the mystery, the simile right there. So let's get into it real quick and close this thing out. I, want, I got another um, lesson I got to do. All right, so the rich man, talking about mainly amongst Israel. Okay, not talking about Esau, because Esau can't enter in. They have no way into that. There's mm, no VIP here, buddy. So he's talking about Israel, all right? So let's deal with this real quick. Let's start off with um, the word camel. Because the word needle, now if you go back, um, 9th century, 15th century, it, it changed in the context of what they were teaching amongst these Christian churches, all right? Uh, the old context, they were focusing on the needle gate. Around the 9th century and 15th century, they changed that teaching and started um, going after the translation of Mark, Luke, and Matthew in the Greek. And they would, um, they would use the word camel as meaning a rope or a cord cannot pass through the eye of a needle. Same concept. It's hard to do, it's difficult. But now let's get into something a little deeper, dealing with this camel. All right, so he says, again, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. See, that's like an old saying, you know, it changes over time, you know, amongst Jake. You know, we say the things the old heads used to say, you know, but this is the reference that they use right here. That, let's see the eye of a needle. All right, you see here the root word. It says what camel, okay, Camel camelos. And now they take that and they try to say that was a typo, but it doesn't matter. Either way, the the, the point is there. Now, um, that word camel goes back to the Hebrew word gamal. All right, gamel, which is one of the letters of the Hebrew alphabet. All right, and um, I think it's the G symbol, but uh, the, the, the gamal or gamel is the camel, okay? It means what labor or labor or burden, okay? That's what it means. So that's what he's talking about. He's not focusing on the camel, he's focusing on the labor or the burdens that they're not willing to cast off so that they can focus on teaching his word and take on suffering for good instead of suffering for wickedness. It don't matter if you're rich or not. You ain't worrying about that. But it's common sense that you're going to lose the love of this world once you come into this truth. And you teach the light instead of teaching of darkness. The darkness is going to hate you. So how can they make money, really? You know? So that's called trimming their ways to seek love. All right, this here is called a needle gate. Okay? And this is where it really comes from uh, in the Old Testament. There's no, there's no real documented proof, but it, it's still there to this day, you know, and it's something that they use over there in Jerusalem and Nazareth, and they even show it in part of their history um, museums, you know, and such attractions. Now, you see the main gate, or oh, they have a needle gate right here, and the main gate right here, all right? When these main gates were closed at night, the camel coat, because they couldn't open this at nighttime to keep out any intruders or any, you know, it's like a business or a city shutting down. That's why the Lord said our gate's going to be open day and night. We ain't got to worry about nothing. You're gonna take, you're gonna, you're gonna, you ain't going to have to take the load off anymore. You're going to be able to carry the load, walk straight through the door. You know, the kingdom, the joy, the riches. All right? And we're going to be able to stand up walking through that. <laughs> but now this is parabolic. Right, let's go see another picture called the needle gate. Look at that. So people still using it till this day. All right. Once the main gate is closed, they open a smaller door. Now the thing is, right, you see how small that is and narrow. All right. Narrow is the way. Let me get that real quick. 
Let's get that real fast. Uh, broad. All right, this is um, Matthews 7 and 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate. All right, and that word straight represents affliction. So the Lord is saying you enter into life, into the kingdom, into riches. Enter ye in at the straight gate. Through the, through the, through the, the um, people see the wide open field and they want to go that way. No, the Lord is saying go through the bushes. Go through the thorns, man. Go through the rough route. All right. Go through the danger, the fire. Go through the narrow way, because don't go the way every, the, the majority of the people going. Go through the way where one only one can go through at once, working out their own salvation with fear and trembling. That's what this represents. Enter ye in at the straight gate. All right, through this affliction. For wide is the gate, and narrow and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. See that this whole world. And many there be that go in there at. See, there's just another Jake making money. There ain't nothing new. And there's more vanity. Because straight is the gate. All right, look at the gate, right? Or the doorway, or the path. So it's, you gotta go through straights. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. Only 144,000 and one third. So, you know, ain't nothing they can say. They just gonna get down, like the Lord said, they're gonna get down and lay down. All right? So there's only a few that's gonna find this narrow way right here, man. To the kingdom. Into the kingdom, man. All right? So, this is where the needle gate is. It says here, let me see what this is. The photo above of a similar gate in Nazareth illustrates the eye of the needle gate quite well. You can see that a camel could not pass through the gate unless it first had all of its baggage removed and then stooped down to get through the gate. Mm. So isn't that, a, what did he say? So, uh, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of the Lord. And um, um, what do you say about the riches and, and the burdens of this world, man? Cast ye off uh, the burdens of this world. All right, so we got to cast that off us first. And um, you know, the old man, right? My family, look at that. This is Second uh, Corinthians two. Um. Uh, that's right. 17. Therefore, if any man be in Yahweh Shai, meaning in the truth, he is a new creature, man. You, you know, it becomes something new and different. Now I said to get the glow. Old things are passed away, the ways of this world. Behold, all things have become new. All right. All right, so I'm going to finish it up with this. This is, um,. Where is it at? Okay, Ephesians 4. And, uh, hold on. Where is it at? Ephesians 4 and 22. It says, uh, that ye put off concerning the former conversations. All right, the old man, all right, the, our old self, being being N I G G A S, man. That's what we was, man. You know, it's bugged out, so we gotta put that off. I'm trying to be gang. So, oh shit, so lucky. <laughs> pause this, John. All right, yeah, so lucky, man. My big ass hand just hit the damn phone. If it flipped, just flip your phone over. You know what I'm saying? Cause I can't remember which side it was on. So I'm gonna continue. It says here, um, Ephesians 4 and 22, that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed 
in the spirit of your mind. And that's the point. Are, are people renewed in the spirit of their mind? When you talk to them, they don't have any answer. They, they're still crying out for wine in the streets. They don't know what the hell going on. They're groping in the dark still. You know, they're rich, but they're blind. You know, I'm sure any blind man would rather see than be rich. You know, some, some, you know. It would be naive to think that all blind men would want to do that. Verse 24, and that ye put on the new man. See, put on the new mindset, following after the mindset and the ways of Yahweh by Shemel which after... Yahweh is created in righteousness and true holiness. All right? Wherefore, putting away, lying, walking around calling yourself a Christian, calling on Jesus and um, all this madness out here, man, lies. Speaking every man truth to his neighbor, for we are members of one body. All right? So, and that's serious, man. We're supposed to be speaking, speaking truth to each other. But, you know. So, yeah, man. Uh, all right. Because, yeah. You had up until the 9th century A.D. and the 15th century A.D. They were teaching it this way. About the needle gate being, uh, the, you know, the camel and taking the load off your back. Other than that, it would be difficult for a camel to go through at night. So they had to take the load off and they had to stoop down. All right. But it still can go through, but it's going to be difficult. And afterward, around the, after the 9th and 15th century, they started kind of um, twisting up. I don't want to say twisting, but, you know, changing the, the context. Not really the context, but the terminology dealing with uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And they started going into the word uh, camelos, you know, dealing with the camel. And they tried to say it meant something different. Like it meant like a rope going through the eye of a needle or a cord. Like in Matthew, it might say rope. Mark, it might say cord. And the other one might say a surgeon's needle. And the other one might say a sewing needle. But either way, the context is still there. That's, it's a difficulty. And it's a hard laboring process to do, all right? It's going to be very difficult. And for a, a camel to go through a needle gate, the smaller gate, the narrow way, it had to cast off the burdens and the laden and the heavy laden and the, and the, uh, the burdens that, is, uh, that it was bearing, all right? The baggage. Okay, let's get um, Matthew 11 and 28. It says what? Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light, right? So cast off that Esau's yoke and, and put on the Yahweh Shah's yoke. All right? He said his burden is easy and his burden is light. You know? So Esau's burden is heavy. Crush your ass to the ground. <laughs> you know? So and we cast our own burdens upon ourselves too. But the Lord said take on his burden. Go out and do his work, and you get a reward for it. True riches. All right. Let me get Mark 4, 4 and 18. I got a bunch more precepts I want to bring out. I'm going to make this kind of short. Mark 4 and 18. It says, the side of my damn dog in the background snoring. And uh, Mark 4 and 18. And these are they which are sown among thorns such as hear the word because a lot of them do hear this word you know they know they're Israelites or in the Bible they read it that we're Israelites and the cares of this world see they care more about this world and the deceitfulness of riches is, all right, the deceitfulness because it's not real riches anyway you look at the dollar it says 20 but it's only valued at probably a dollar 
today. You know what I mean? Just because the, the money, the number on the money doesn't change doesn't mean in the system it didn't change. It loses value. That's why you had people in Weimar Republic with millions of dollars fiat currency stacked up, burning it, and using it to keep them hot at night, warm at night, because it, was, it became nothing but uh, trash, funny money. It's uh, operating under de facto. So who, how much money do people truly have, you know? If they have nothing but dollars and they don't have gold and silver. They say if you don't have it in your pocket, you don't own it. People, I got money in my pocket, I got paper. Well, scriptures say, well, the Constitution says money shall not be known as a note. You know, the dollar says Federal Reserve note. So they can change that at any time. What's they going to do? All right? And these people are going to sell out. They gave them a, a taste of the pie, and then they're going to pack back them away. Like you do with a dog. You give a dog a taste of something, you got them. And you tell it, you, you can pull it away. Now you got the dog at your command. You, you got their attention. You put your hand back out there, take another bite. All right, so Mark 4 and 18. And these are they which are sown among thorns, man. Such as hear the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of of other things entering in choke the word and it becometh unfruitful all right and it's gonna happen man they, they, a lot of people say it's not they get out there in the entertainment industry and they get approached and their approach is gonna be from wicked people they're gonna be pagans hey man you want to do this video with me i just seen in your last video you had devil horns on though man you better not do no video with that guy all right, or um, be on a movie set and they take you to the to the actor's couch, what they call that, the director's couch. You know, start asking and get naked. <laughs> or do like Will Smith in his first movie, he has to lay down with a, you know, a dude. You know, so it's, uh, all these rappers have to wear dresses a lot, man. You know, or they get offered to promote some product. And that company is nothing but a Masonic country, a company. Or you sign a contract, and that contract to Rick Ross that you might sign, you might be signed to a gang member. Or you sign that contract, and that contract is signed to another label, not just to that one person. You know, it'd be like a multi contract. So what happened is you signed, a, I'm saying, I don't know why Rick Ross called him, I say him. He signed to Rick Ross, like Meek Mills did. Rick Ross is signed to a major company. That major company can change their contract with Rick Ross, which will ultimately change the binding contract with that other artist. So it's like, it could be a straight trap, man, anywhere. So that's why it's better to just move in the spirit, take your daily bread, uh, um, work and handle your business, uh, you say, quietly. Uh, study that you may be quiet and be not slothful in business this is our business the exchanging of the truth alright to those that buy and sell and that's who the ones that believe and the ones that don't believe alright so yeah man I think I'm gonna end it here cause I got a lot more I wanna talk about with this topic and um that's it, man. I, I'm going to get to the scripture real quick. Let me see. All right. So I'm going to go to the one in Mark chapter 10, verse 25. It says, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. All right. So it's a little more parabolic than what some would think, you know. And they could say the rope through the needle, a cord through a needle, sewing needle or a surgeon's needle. It doesn't matter. You know, but the, uh, the true form of it goes back to the ancient Israel, ancient Nazareth, okay, and it's still being used today, called the needle gate, and for a camel to go through that, there's a humbling process, they have to submit under the mighty hand of Yahweh Bashim Shai, which means to what, follow up under the apostles, right? the, 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 the ones that are teaching the truth, or brothers that you may know, that's teaching the truth, you know, the doctrine of the truth, 
get under the umbrella, basically. You know, whether, um, as I said, get under the umbrella of truth, I'll say that. And to go through that needle gate, that narrow way, you have to be humble. And, humble. and to humble doesn't mean walking around with your head down. Humbling means, you know, you don't walk around, kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of. You got to watch that. People take advantage of you like that. Humbling means doing this work. That's a humbling process and discipline. All right. And casting off the burdens of this world. And that's just it. It's very simple. All right. So with that, I'm going to say, uh, shalom.